Hello, Mark. Thank you so much for the Prime. I appreciate it. Oh my goodness, you've been subscribed for eight months with Prime. Holy shit. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I actually, I just finished up sending out the notifications that I'm live, so I need to do some work on my microphone real quick. If you don't mind, give me just another moment. We'll wait so people can gather in as well before and get settled in before we do our recap. So just a moment. We'll be right back. Thank you so much. All right. Hello. Hello, everyone. I hope this is good. We will see. Of course, y'all let me know. Okay. I am very excited. I have some news for today. If y'all don't mind, let me... Oh, I forgot. I need to hold off on those things. Okay. Let me go to OBS, get this pulled up. Also, I've got to move some stuff out of my own way real quick. I hope everybody has had a good day so far. Hey guys, I'm just dropping in for a second right now to say hi. I and I love you and hope you have a great stream. I hope you have uh, I hope you have fun. Sorry, I can't read. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate you stopping by and I hope you have a good rest of your night. Yeah, and do all the good fun things. I know you got some plans for the evening. I'm still getting settled, I'm so sorry. Also, I am a little embarrassed because I was so, like, trying to make sure I started my stream at 6 and had the, like, starting soon going so I could, uh, at least buy myself a little bit more time to get ready but still be quote-unquote on time. And I forgot to update my stream manager, so anyone who saw the notification and it totally said session 2. No, this is session 3. It's, it's my own fault. Whoops. My bad. It's okay, in theory I fixed it now, so it'll be fixed by the end of the stream. Alright, give me just a second. Other reason why um, it's taken me an extra second to get settled is because it's getting here. I have new dice to show y'all. Y'all ready? Hello. Hello, Dave. Thank you for paying your- Oh, it adds. Gosh. I, nope, I'm gonna try to, um, be more family-friendly. 
Gosh darn. Juliet. Hi! Yes, I got new dice. Thank you for paying your taxes and for being first. Okay. Can y'all see these? They're like a dark purple. And if you happen to go to my TikTok, I uploaded a TikTok. Part of the reason why I was running behind is because I wanted to film myself opening these before stream. So, like, I had to make sure I do it before stream. These are the ones I rolled. And I got... What was it? Did I get a 17, I believe? For this one? I rolled the d20 for that. And then to do a little first roll. Thank you, yes. Oh, are we family friendly now? We're not 100% family friendly. However, I'm going to try to monitor my language a little bit better. I make no promises though. Give me like 30 minutes and that's going to go out the window. We'll see how these roll rolls go today. <laughs> All right. And then I have this, uh, which is, there's also purple in there, but it's more light blue and light purple. I have been stealing side plots from my last campaign for this session, lol. I am so excited. Oh my goodness. So y'all, last night, Day and I were talking a little bit, and we were, um, he was teaching me about a lot of stuff, and we were looking at different monsters, which I thought was pretty cool. He was kind of going over how he makes stuff, and I'm excited. I don't know what's coming today, though. I don't know when and where. I just know, like... I know there's going to be some cool stuff coming. I just have no clue, like, how it's going to come to be. I still have very minimal knowledge. Okay, sorry, I'm getting distracted by this. All right, so I'm going to roll this d20. Sorry, I forget my camera's all the way up here sometimes. I have to, like, hold it above my head. Okay. I don't know if y'all can see this. Let's go. Yeah, y'all can't see that for shit. It's okay, though. I got an 11. Okay, so pretty mid. Pretty mid. I guess that means I'm going to start with the darker set for now. He knows what one thing looks like, but not what it does or where it's coming from. LOL. Exactly. I know... I don't even remember its name, to be honest. So I just remember what it looks like. That's about it. So, we have ideas. You will quickly learn which dice you like and which don't. Yeah, we're about to find out, huh? They've told me to mess around, F around and find out. I can abbreviate stuff. F around and find out. Okay. I think I'm about set up. Let me get my little book here. Oh, I have to get Discord set up though. Also, is the music too loud? How's the music? How do we feel? And I need to make sure we can hear Day. I believe I believe you were good last time. I'm gonna be honest, I don't remember how much of the VOD I watched. Take your time. You think it's good? Okay, cool. Then, yep, yep. Hello. Once it connects. I think it's connecting. My internet's been a little in and out, so we will see how it goes. Oh, I need to start a new page for today. Yes. All right, I'll say it's the 25th. Hello. Hello. Hi, welcome. Uh, across the room looking at a Himpo lamp that I just bought. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh my goodness, I'm excited. I need to see you. Small. Yes. Small. Aww. Amazing. I'll send you once he's all lit up. Oh <gasps> yes, please. I am excited. Me too. He's he's good. I he thank goodness he arrived today because I needed a hippo lamp today. <laughs> yes. Yes. That is perfect. Yes, Honestly. Perfect. Today um, is the day for it. Remove my papers. We both got new things. Papers I have more papers than usual. Ooh, I'm taking that as a good sign. Mm hmm Yeah, so I'll I... explain at the end what I, why I have more papers. <laughs> okay, yes, please. I would love to know. I am so ready. Fun. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Give me just a second. I'm so sorry. No, you're good. Okay. 
Okay, I think we're good. I think it's just the dogs. The dogs are being oh, a little okay. weird. You're good, you're good. Dogs be okay. like that sometimes. They really do. I think it's just the neighbor dogs are out now. Mm -hmm. So they're losing their minds a little bit. But we should be good now. Okay. Pencil. I think I'm... I have everything I need. <laughs> good, ready to go? Yeah, let's do this. Alright, time for the recap. So last session, you woke up in a small inn, found Octavia, and had some breakfast. You set out for the day, bought a shield, and quickly discovered a tree with a strange rune carved into it. You realized that your necklace fit perfectly in the center of the rune and caused the tree to open. You descended into a large storage area where you noticed a strange mirror. You solved an element puzzle, then realized that things in the room were not appearing in the mirror. After removing those things, including Octavia, the mirror opened and revealed a cache of resources, presumably left for you by your people. Among the cache was a magnifying glass that you can visibly see magic through, similarly to the spell Detect Magic, and a necklace similar to the one that you used to open the tree. You left the tree and were quickly attacked by a trio of monsters, one of which was carrying a hefty sum of gold and a note instructing her to leave Octavia alive if possible, but to kill her if she interfered with whatever the monster was sent here for. Octavia explained that a fellow follower of her patron had sent the monster to kill her since he was jealous of her power and didn't think she could make it to the temple. You continued through the forest before you began to notice a deep rot had set in, and Octavia explained that this is due to the heart of the forest being sick. You traveled on your own to find the heart, uh, absolutely decimated a vine blight, solved some riddles, and navigated a maze. The treant, which was the talking tree, at the heart of the forest told you that wicked magic was polluting the forest. You traveled to a town in the north, talked to some of the locals, and used your magnifying glass to track down some dark magic. You dug up a small metal box there with, which Octavia seemed to recognize, and you headed back to the inn where you read your journal and rested. So far you've learned that you are a Spring Aladrin War Cleric, and that you were sent here to investigate and see if something was involved in a larger investigation being conducted by your people. You found what you were looking for extremely quickly, and seemed to think that it was involved in the larger puzzle, but you were still gathering information on it, and you are now waking up at the inn. Perfect. Alright. Alright, <laughs> good morning. The sounds happy when you wake up, like removing the box from the soil seemed to take the rot with it. All around you, birds sing joyfully, a breeze blows through healthy branches, and you can feel the warm sun on your face. Awesome. I guess we need to go find Octavia. Hmm. Alright, you get up for the day, get your gear on, and as you're getting ready to head out, the door opens in, and there is Octavia standing with two trays of breakfast. She uh, maneuvers around you and sets them down on a small table in the room, and then smiles proudly um, at the, the fact that she's brought breakfast. <laughs> Good morning, Octavia. This looks delicious. Good morning. And uh, you can see that she has brought, uh, again, this unusually large egg. This is like a massive egg, like takes up largely the whole plate, and there is... Some pretty typical looking toast on the plate this time, and a cup of coffee for each of you. Amazing. Yeah. So, what's up with the huge egg? Oh, I guess you, I guess you wouldn't remember. Um, it, it's an owlbear egg. That's why it's so big, because owlbears hatch out of there. And she, like, gestures towards the egg on the plate. That's nice. I, I don't know how I feel about that. Is that a good thing? Way bigger than normal chicken eggs. Yeah, I, the more the better, I guess. Exactly, and she's shoveling egg <gasps> into her mouth. Did you say eggs. exactly? <laughs> I did. <laughs> I love that. That is perfect. Thank you. Uh, oh. Yeah. So as you sit down to eat, uh, do you drink the coffee? Oh, absolutely. I'm gonna need All it right. for today. You lift the coffee to your mouth and discover that it is less of a liquid and more of a sludge. And you're going to need to make a constitution saving throw to get this down. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. Two. <laughs> oh, no. So it's plus three, which totals five. Um, as you attempt to swallow the coffee, you end up choking on it and you spit it all over yourself. And um, Octavia looks at you kind of surprised and then and then seems to have a moment of realization and goes, ah, dwarvish coffee, a bit different than you're probably used to. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think this is for me. It's all right, you know, it's, it's really not for everybody. And she kind of eyes her own cup a bit warily now as well. Oh. Like, as if she's not, she's like, hey, if you, if you spit I was, all over the place, I don't know if I want to send it here. <laughs> I was I was about to give you the rest of mine, so maybe you know, not. We'll pass that's today. Right. We've, we've got water skins, and she pulls one out from her uh, from her bag. 
Perfect. Um, so you guys finish up your breakfast and uh, gather your things for the day. And um, as you head downstairs, you begin to hear um, some shouting and clanging of, of gear and clattering happening um, off by the basically near where you came into town last night. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we should go check that out, huh? I suppose so. And Octavia says it in a way that like, it seems like it didn't occur to her that you would check that out before you said that. <laughs> What's, wait, what's, do you know what's going on? Well, no, but you know, don't, don't mess around, don't find out. Do you think this is a good idea, Octavia? I'm starting to doubt, but I, I'm curious. I can't handle anything. We, we, it's fine. And she, she starts to lead the way out. All right, let's go. All right. Um, as you head out, you can immediately, like, very easily follow the sounds that are happening, um, with, which is, like, kind of worried shouting and, and general, uh, panic near the mines at the entrance to town. Um, roll me perception. Okay. As you make your way over there. Oh, check here. Twelve. Twelve, and that is plus six for you, so pretty good, eighteen. Um... As you're looking around and listening, you can hear sort of a horrible chittering noise um, coming from the mines and, and a faint buzzing as you approach. Oh. Do you... What's that buzzing noise? Octavia, do you know what that is? No. But it, I, I don't know. I, I, it, it sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? it? It does, but I just can't quite put my finger on it. And you approach up towards the mines, and um, you can immediately see what the buzzing noise is, which is a very large swarm of some kind of insect flying around. And people oh, seem no. to be panicked by this. It, it seems like a lot of people are getting bit by whatever is in the swarm of insects. Um, and and it's, it seems like it's just pouring out from the mines, almost never-ending. Oh, no. Bees, the bane of my existence. Not a fan of bees? No. Mm -mm. Can't say I am either, but it doesn't totally look like they have this handled. Yeah, I feel bad. I feel like we should go check it out. I feel like we should help them out. Yeah, I mean, what's a couple bees? We got this. <laughs> maybe, maybe that new shield will come in handy. Yeah, there we go. Um, and she she continues to she approaches a little more cautiously now as she's moving towards the the massive swarm of, of, of bugs that are ve buzzing very loudly and, and harming people. Um, and as you approach, you will get a free round of combat uh, because you're sort of coming up on this swarm. So you can take okay. your turn first if you'd like. Yes, please. I would like to. So D20. Roll a d20 to hit. So you'll go, Octavia will go, you'll go again, Octavia will go again, and then the monsters will go. Oh, wait, okay. I also need to... Do combat music? Combat music. All right, let's All do All right. And I'm gonna make a note that we're fighting the bees. I rolled a four, <laughs> by the way. Uh, four plus, are you using the warhammer? War yep, you already yeah. know. Four plus four is not gonna do it. Um, you swing to at the bees with your uh warhammer, and as you swing, they sort of part around it, allowing it to pass through the swarm without harming them. Um, Octavia is going to do she's gonna use her packed weapon. To attack the bees um she swings her glaive through the swarm seemingly watching as it parts around again but on this upswing mm. um she is able to catch the the bees with her glaive and that is nice this is probably the 10 all right um feel that i know it, it doesn't matter how long you've been playing i use still there's still one dice that always gets you yep all right, dealing damage to the swarm. So it is now your turn. What would you like to do? Oh, wait, does the swarm not go yet? Nope. Um. So because you sort of got the jump on them, you go first and then combat starts. So oh. that was, like, you guys sort of sneak attacking them almost. Oh, and then we go again. Okay. Nice. I got a nine. Got the little dot at the bottom. Nine plus four hits. Uh, go ahead and yes. roll me your damage. Okay. And that is 
Which one? I'm so sorry. Oh, it is a D10. So 1D10 plus 2. Um, I should be this one. 2 plus 2. All right. Um, you swing your war hammer and the swarm attempts to part around it, but you're too quick and it does slam into several of them, sending insect carcasses flying everywhere. Um, and it is Octavia's turn. Um, she swings her glaive through the swarm twice, getting a couple of good hits in. And we will now... Now the swarm is attacking. Um, the swarm seems to notice that you guys are here now and are, are doing a lot more damage than the frightened townsfolk are, and it approaches uh, surrounding you and Octavia. Um, and you're gonna take some bites here. <laughs> oh no! Should have worn my long sleeves today. You should have. <laughs> you should have known. <laughs> Hang on, sorry, I need my calculator. Oh no, you are all good. Trust me, you're running all the numbers for this, so <laughs> take your time. Okay. So Octavia takes some damage as some um, as the swarm bites her. And you're going to take 10 points of damage from the insect bites. Okay. What's my starting? Or like, where am I at? Health you start wise. at 20, so you're at 10 now. Oh, shit. Okay. But you do notice as you're looking at the swarm that it seems to be dramatically reduced in size already. Oh, okay. There's less than half of it remaining. Okay. So... It's my turn now, right? It is now your turn, yes. What would you like to do? Warhammer these bitches. Right. See, I told you, give me 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to wait till combat. I got a 7. A 7 um, plus 4. Does not hit. Uh, you swing your warhammer and the swarm, much smaller, uh, is able to dart out of the way. Um, anything for your bonus action? Oh, sh right. I get a bonus action. I forgot about that. I'm going to... Kick him. Kick the bees. <laughs> Roll to hit with your kick. It's 1d20 plus 2. Okay, 11 plus 2. That hits! Uh, roll me 1d4. Okay, d... Hold on, is this the 4? Yes, this is the 4. 1. 1 uh, plus your strength, so plus 2, so it's a 3. Nice. Um... You kick at the swarm and are able to hit it as it dodges out of the way of your hammer and into your boot. Um, Octavia slashes at them with her glaive, but both times they're able to dart out of the way. Man. And it is the swarm's turn. Nice. Um, the swarm swarms in um, and bites you for two damage. Okay. And bites Octavia for some as well. Okay. And um, the swarm is is again still still fairly small as it as it sort of darts around, seemingly less coordinated and a bit more panicked than it was before. And you begin to hear that chittering sound again. You realize that it's hmm. not the swarm making it, uh, but in fact something else. It is now your turn. I guess maybe we should finish out the swarm first. Go for it. Uh, roll two hit. And I'm going with the Warhammer. Oh, what is it? 15. 15. All right, 15 hits. Roll me your damage. And this is the... How did I lose my D10? <laughs> this is it, right? Yes, this is it. Okay. Nine. Oh, wait, wait, it's a D10, right? Yeah. Okay, I got a nine. Nine, all right. Um... You slam your hammer into the swarm, and it is reduced to all but nothing. There's just a few insects remaining. It's not Octavia's turn. Wait, can I kick them again? You, you can kick them again. Go ahead and roll to kick. Sorry, I should be asking about your bonus action. <laughs> no, it's okay. I just really like kicking them. Roll you couldn't tell. I got an eight. eight. Is that, that a hit? Not hit. Oh, As man. you swing at the swarm, uh, you do collide with several of the corpses that are falling out of the swarm, but aren't able to hit any live bugs. 
um, Octavia swings with her glaive, a light bursting from it as she collides it with the rest of the swarm, finishing them off and, and slicing several of them clean in half despite their small size. Amazing. Yes. You have defeated the bees. <laughs> Woo! And you watch now as from the mines there are some more um more dwarves running um some with pickaxes in hand others having abandoned their gear down below and their attempt to escape but you see that there's no more bees coming out of the mine um just just dwarves right now looking pretty pretty terrified i guess we better go in huh i guess so we made quick work of the bees we did that was too quick <laughs> all right uh, I guess down we go. Well, um, can we, like... Is there a way for us to heal up at all first, or...? Yeah, um, so you could... Let me look at your character. You've got some healing spells that you could use now. Um, you could... You would use the spell slot, but since you're out of combat, you could use as many healing spells as you have spell slots for right now, and it would just be, like, six seconds past, and then you do it again. Okay. Um... Let me look at Octavia. Warlocks do not get healing spells, so she doesn't have much there. Okay. Um, but you could also, if you wanted to, try and bandage up some of your wounds and make a medicine check without expending a spell slot. Oh, yeah. Let's do a medicine check. How do I do that? Okay. Um, so you're going to go ahead and roll a d20, and you'll add your medicine, which is a plus four, and that will see like how good of a job you did sort of repairing yourself as much as you can non-magically. Okay. <laughs> a ten. 10. Okay, so plus 4 is 14, which is a, which is a pretty good job. Um, you are able to regain uh, 7 hit points, which I believe brings you to 15. Okay. I... Hmm. I don't know what's in there. Not sure. How's like, Octavia, how are you feeling? Me? I'm fine. Okay. Then out of character real quick what spells do i have because i know i have the one that i used on octavia i didn't think i could use it on myself mm -hmm. any but... spell that you can heal people with there's only like one that you that you won't be able to as far as cleric spells go um but you don't have that yet so okay. um just as far as the cleric spell list goes that you have right now at level two you have cure wounds and you have healing word so healing word is going to be sort of be your in combat someone went down i need to get them up right now bonus action quick little healy thing okay um, cure wounds does more health but it is an action um so healing word is kind of your in combat one cure wounds is your out of combat one because they both take a first level spell slot but cure wounds does twice as much healing okay so i guess should i go ahead and cure wounds then or should i wait cure till wounds. the end hmm. it's up to you You're okay. just chilling. how many now. spell slots do i get you have four Okay. Um, you... I'm pretty sure you can channel Divinity to regain one later, though, if you want to. Okay. Yeah, maybe I'll... Maybe I'll go ahead and... Let's go ahead and heal up. I need to be 100% for whatever's in there. Alright, um, you cast Cure Wounds. Um... Do I have a D8? I guess I do. Okay. And your what's your wisdom? Is it? Oh, I have your wisdom. Um, yeah, I have no you. clue. <laughs> <laughs> what's your wisdom? I say, looking at your character sheet. Um, yeah, you'll heal the full by that. You said I'll I'll uh, heal full back. Mm -hmm, yep. Nice. Okay. Perfect. Divinity. Yeah, you can. Okay, yes, yeah, so you can channel divinity. Um, which you get two channel divinities per day. And you can... Oh, no, one channel divinity per day. You can use this feature once per day. You can regain one expended spell slot. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So cool. you expended one spell slot. Let me mark that. Sorry. Oh, no, you're all good. All right. You guys are good. You are all healed up and ready to go. What would you like to do? Let's head into the mines. I think we need to make merch of what would you like to do because I say that so much. <laughs> you should. Oh my goodness. Ooh, what if as you as the DM you have like a little hippo or something? Yeah, some use a little hippo with like what would you want what do you want to do over top of it? 
That would be cute. All right, you approach the mines. Um, Octavia leads the way as you sort of flank behind her. And um, you, you are again still, still sort of hearing that, um, that sort of grinding, chittering noise coming from, from down below. Um, I can remind me after the campaign and I can send you the video of the sound that I'm thinking of, but it's going to Please do. Right <laughs> yes. Um, and you, yeah, you make your way towards the entrance of the mine. Um, and most of the dwarves seem to have cleared out by now or, or, um, any that are down there aren't able to come back up at this point. So you're not really fighting through a crowd of them anymore as you make your way down towards the entrance of the mine. Awesome. Down we go. All right. Um, as you enter, you notice um, down below, uh, at, like as you're walking by, that there is some blood on the way up, and uh, you don't see anyone dead or too injured to walk yet. Uh, but as you make your way down deeper and deeper, you, you are starting to find um, injured mm -hmm. dwarves and, uh, at the very least, abandoned gear that looks a little suspicious as you make Ooh. your way further down. Got it. That's and... promising. <laughs> a little bit, I guess, you know? I mean, mm. I mean, they're dwarves. So they, they're not really trained in combat, these ones. And she, like, gestures vaguely. Um, and she doesn't seem too concerned by the by the injured folk right now. Um, Octavia, don't speak ill will of the dead. They're not dead. They're <laughs> fine. Probably. Uh, I hope so. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of wigging me out. Let, let's keep moving. Okay. We'll, we'll get him on the way up. We'll, we'll we'll help him. Okay. And she sort of like waves vaguely as um, she continues down deeper. Um, and with your passive perception of 16, as you make your way down, you hear a scratching above you and look up to be met with six glowing eyes. Oh no. What? Octavia, look up. And she looks up and immediately flings a dagger up towards the creature. Um, nice. And it uh, ricochets off the ceiling, landing harmlessly n next to you um, as this creature um, begins to descend down towards you. And with your dark vision, as it comes a little bit closer, you're able to make out a dark gray fur-covered body and um, two sets of arms, one set of legs with the uh, top set of arms extending in, in strange, uh, almost broken looking ways as the creature um, makes its way down the side of the cave wall. You can see that it does have six yellow glowing eyes and a mane of dark hair, pointed ears, and, and strange, almost spider-like fangs protruding from its face. In each of its lower arms, it holds a dagger and it does not seem friendly. <laughs> Oh no. What would you like to do? Can we get a vibe check? You can vibe check, yeah, roll roll insight. <laughs> oh I got a twenty. <laughs> you got a twenty? So the vibe with check. a twenty, I will tell you. Not only this thing is definitely hostile, but you yeah. can also tell that um it has an attack that will poison you and an attack that will restrain you. Okay. Good to know. Mm -hmm. hmm. And from that, you can deduce that poison is probably not going to be super effective against it. Okay. Warhammer it is. <laughs> Alright, there you go. Roll to hit. <laughs> I got a four. Oh yeah, no. Four does not hit. You swing your warhammer um, towards the creature and it's able to maneuver with its several limbs out of the way of the hammer, which clangs off of the side of the cave wall, sending chips of rock flying. Uh, 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 anything for your bonus action? You kicking it? I'm kicking it. All right, roll to kick it. <laughs> We're rolling to kick. 15. 15 not bad. Hit. Uh, roll me your damage, 1d4 plus 2. D... That is not D4, this... Well, I yeeted it on the floor and got a 1 if that counts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, um, uh, kick the creature firmly in one of the, its legs, dealing three points of damage to it. Um, Octavia charges forward. And she, um, casts a spell over her glaive, causing it to flare with a burning heat. And she t strikes at the creature twice. 
Nice. Uh, landing a clean hit across its chest with the first strike, uh, causing it to f the the magic over her weapon to flare up and into the wound. Uh, she swings a second time, but the creature is able to catch the hilt of her blade and shove her backwards with it. Oh no! Here we go. It is now the creature's turn. Sorry, I'm adding her damage. Okay. Um, the creature charges towards you. Um, Pinchers lashing at you, but you're able to shove it back with your shield. Um, from back further in the cave where you've shoved it, you watch as some sort of projectile comes flying towards both of you. Make a dexterity saving throw. Oh no. Mm -hmm. I got a five. Five plus one. Oh no. Um, you can hear Octavia dodge out of the way next to you, but you are struck firmly uh, with some sort of sticky web, which is sticking you in place. Um, your movement speed is going to be halved, uh, which I will I will worry about. Okay. And it is still its turn. <laughs> oh God. Okay. Um, it you you watch as um, where Octavia has landed a spray of poison flies from this creature's mouth towards her and it seems to hurt her quite badly as it lands mm. there oh shit yeah octavia you good fine but she does not seem like she's like great you know <laughs> oh no i'm gonna do i need to like cut myself out of the web is that what needs to happen um no you or can i still yourself... strike you could, you could make it to her with your movement. It's just you have less movement than you normally would, so you can't go as far as you would have been able to otherwise. Okay, then I'm more hammering it up. All right. Um, so, yes, you can you can make it to either Octavia or the creature, but you would not be able to make it to both from here. Oh, snap. Mm -hmm. So healing word does have a range of 30 feet. So what you could do is you could go hit the creature with your war hammer and then heal Octavia 1d4 from where you're at. Or if you wanted to use your action to cure wounds, you could go to her and heal her with that. Um, and you probably, um, you could use like, I don't know if your cantrip, what cantrips you have that are, do you, what cantrips did you pick? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I'm... oh, you have sacred flame. Yeah, I had no eye guidance, sacred flame. The problem is I don't remember. Yeah, I think I did troll the dead. Right. Toll, toll the dead. Wait, toll. I totally wrote toll. troll the dead. Yeah, it's one of my favorite spells because canonically in the game, you point at one creature you can see within range, which is 60 feet, so you would be able to do this. Um, and the sound of a Dolores bell fills the air around it for a moment. Um, and this is like only the creature can hear that bell. So it makes a wisdom saving throw. So you don't roll, it'll it'll roll to avoid it instead of you rolling to hit it. Um, okay. And it takes damage if it fails. Um, but it's basically you point at a creature and it hears bells clanging and then just takes damage and I can just picture it, like, in real life, you, you'd just be pointing at someone and they'd go like, Ow, what's that noise? Like, <laughs> yeah, okay. No one else can hear it, so they're just reacting. I love that. Yeah, okay, we're doing that. Alright, um, so you run to Octavia, fighting against the web, and you're able to reach her to cast Cure Wounds. Do you want to roll it or do you want me to Oh, wait, 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 wait. Do I want to do cure? Hold on. Wait, what's can to Wait, hold on. I confused myself now. Mm -hmm. Um, because I was originally putting in a warhammer, and then what was the other one? Oh, you're gonna warhammer, and then you're gonna. That's what I. Word. Okay, yeah, you can do that. Sorry, I did the wrong order. <laughs> no, you're good. I think I'm gonna. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going for it. Yep, and I'm I rolled an. I did win ahead. I rolled an eleven on the warhammer. Plus four is gonna be a fifteen, which hits. You charge forward, fighting your way through the web, shoving some of it aside with your shield, and you raise your warhammer and bring it down, crashing over the creature's head. Roll me your damage. All right. D four. Save me three. It's a D ten for the hammer. Wait, it's a D ten. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Ah, you are. One of these days, one of these days, I will get it. Is it this one? Wait. I believe in you. I'm... You got this. I need to send you my dice guide that I made today that like tells you which dice is which. Okay, I think I found it. I got a one. That was better than the other one. I'll take the three. <laughs> Wait, really? 
Yeah. I mean, you might oh. as well. You rolled a three, so... Thank okay. you. You strike the creature with your war hammer. It raises its arm to block the hit, but... Uh, and catches the, some of the hammer's momentum, but it does take some damage from it. Um, you turn around, and what word would you like to say to heal Artigia? Oh crap, I forgot what the word was. Yeah, I, I like, I usually say live, um, but like, I don't know, a lot of Was it Alakazam? Is that I what I said? Alakazam. I think that was your word, yeah. Alakazam. <laughs> Alakazam. Alright, do you want to roll the healing, or do you want me to roll it? I'll let you roll it. I think you might have better luck. Right. Knock on wood. Good. Okay, activity is restored. Three plus your wisdom modifier, which is four, so seven hit points. Okay. I can do this. Math time. I look, you dropped some of my dice down on the side of my desk, so hopefully I don't need that one. Oh no, I feel that. That's why I'm keeping my backup set close by at this point. She is looking a little better. Um, it is now her turn. I don't even know which one it was. It was the yellow one. That's all I know. Okay. <laughs> she pushes up to her feet, her weapon still blazing with some sort of magic, and charges at the creature. Um, on her first swing, she, she sort of charges past it, missing pretty spectacularly and nearly falling. Um, but she's able to recover, turn around, and stab the creature in the back, causing the magic to flare up again. Nice. And she deals a significant amount of damage to the creature. It does not look like it was super happy about that hit. It is now your turn. Wait, is the spider? Oh, yeah, the spider has to go, doesn't it? Should have said anything. I should have just gone for it. No. no you're That's no fun. Well, only one of his hit attacks hit anyway. <laughs> um, he, yeah, you watch as the creature flails, shooting off some web that just hits the ceiling and spraying poison, which doesn't hit anything at all. But he... He is able to claw at you, landing a pretty solid hit and dealing five points of damage. Okay. And it is your turn. Warhammer, let's go. And I'm oh, gonna right switch now. it. Octavia is behind it with like a sword through its back. You are in front of it. So that means that you are flanking, and you get to roll with advantage. What is- wait, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you surround something with allies, like there's one of you on either side, then you get advantage on your attack rolls. Oh, hell yeah, because it can't go behind. Oh, take the high one. Okay, well, I got a four on the first one. Roll better the second time. 16! There you go, 16 plus four is an unnatural 20, which hits, but unfortunately is not a crit. Um, only natural 20s are crit. That is okay. So, go ahead and roll me your damage. It'll be 1d10 plus 2. Thank you. Hmm. Six. Six? All right. You raise your war hammer, and as you do, Octavia shifts her blade forward. You can see it erupt out of the creature's chest as you bring your hammer down, shattering its skull, and the creature falls back over Octavia's blade, motionless. Nice. Did yeah, we do it? Yeah. We did it! <laughs> yeah! Let's go, Octavia! Yeah, that guy was tougher than he looked. Yeah, you. for real. He almost got me there. Yeah, it was close, but we did it. All right, let's help those dwarves. Let's go. Wait. You make your... Yeah? Can we see... Can we, like, I don't know, investigate to see if she has anything? Anything oh, the, worth the taking? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You can investigate. Roll me an investigation check. Ten. Ten. Your investigation. That's Octavia's investigation. Your investigation is <laughs> plus one. <laughs> so it's an <laughs> eleven. Um, as you look over the creature, you can see that the garb that it wears seems to be made out of its own webbing, and it doesn't seem like it would be stable long term. Um, maybe a month is all that it would really last. Um, you can see that the two knives that it has are, are pretty chipped up and you don't really think worth taking. Um, but you do see that there's poison dripping from its mouth. And you do think you could collect some of that and maybe apply it to one of your own weapons later. Ooh, okay. I want to collect some of the poison. Yeah, so it's assumed that you have like infinite little vials with which to collect random things. Is so that kind of like the med kit? It's, yeah, it's kind of like that. Okay. 
yeah like how you have infinite rope and food is just kind of like you know you also have infinite little little jars <laughs> gotcha nice yep. Yeah, so you're able to um, take one of your little glass vials and collect some of the poison from it. Uh, and Octavia looks at one of the knives, but then seems to decide not to take it. Um, and yeah, you've got some you've got some poison. So you can go ahead and write a uh, vial of poison in your inventory. And I will okay. also write that in your inventory. I need to make an actual character sheet character sheet, because I haven't, I, know. I didn't I'll, do it I'll today. The stuff that you know, and I can send it to you in like a character sh online character sheet format. Yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> I'll do. Remind me, and I'll do it after. Yes, that'll be perfect. Cause I was looking at it earlier. I just didn't get that far. Yeah. No, and it's hard to tell where things are supposed to go to. Even if you have yeah. information, like you probably aren't sure where to put it anyway. So. Not really. No. Nope. <laughs> All right. Um, you begin to make your way out of the mines, um, and there's not too many injured dwarves. Um, there's a few enough and enough people coming back in to help that you're able to drag them all to the surface where they um, begin to get medical attention from um, other people in town. Nice. Um, Hello, guys. As you're sort of gathering your wits about you and, and recovering a little bit from the fight, um, you see the same woman from earlier um, that, that you met last night uh, approaches you and, and says, thank you for your help. Yeah, I'm glad we could help. We uh, don't have much to give for our thanks, but our blacksmith has agreed, has agreed to sharpen and repair your weapons for you. Really? That would be amazing. Yeah, uh, he's just in the center of town. Um, I'm going to help with the with the injured but um if you just head in past the fountain you'll you'll find him awesome thank you so much good luck thank you and she gives sort of a nod of thanks and heads over to tend to the wounded awesome well, octavia sounds like we need to get our weapons sharpened that was supposed to come out better than not <laughs> yeah. i guess we do uh and she heads starts to head into town sweet I'm gonna follow her. Let's go. I hope she knows where she's All going. Right. As you head into town, um, you're able to see pretty pretty quickly that it's sort of made of um, sort of four quadrants that are split by two streets. And in the smack center of town, there is um, a kind of actually a fountain that's on the smaller side of things. But in a little town like this, that's not overly surprising. But as okay. you pass the fountain, you do begin to sort of see and smell the smoke from a blacksmith shop. And um, you see that uh, it's less of a permanent building and more of like an awning that's been set up um perhaps hmm. to um allow the smoke to escape without needing to build a chimney but you do see a blacksmith working um repairing pickaxes that were damaged in the battle awesome hi there and oh, oh hello. sorry no you're good you're good <laughs> i was just gonna say that she doesn't seem to notice you <laughs> oh well perfect she does she <laughs> said hi yeah. oh hello <laughs> Um, and she walks over and uh, is a surprisingly small person to be in blacksmithing, um, wielding the heavy hammers and things. You see that this this person is a halfling, uh, measuring about four feet tall, and is relatively petite even for a halfling. But she hoists the weapons and hammers with ease. Amazing. I don't know how you do it. Well, thank you. It's, I'm stronger than I look. You must be the heroes that helped us in the mines. Yep, yeah, that's us. Uh, I am here to uh, repair your weapons, anything I can do for you. I just, I have my Warhammer here I would love to get Ooh, I repaired back up. Yeah, let me see what I can do for you. And she like holds out her hands for the hammer. I give her the hammer. Do you think yeah, you, you can do anything for the massive... shield? Sorry. Huh? Do you think you can do anything for the shield? I think I could. Um, and you watch as she takes this massive warhammer in one hand and tucks the shield under her other arm and like carries <laughs> them off easily towards her forge. Um, and she also takes Octavia's glaive and one of her daggers. Um, awesome. And you and Octavia can sit and you can short rest um, while nice. you wait for your weapons. Have you done a short rest yet? I don't think so. So short rests are a little different than long rests. You don't get your spell slots back and you don't automatically get like your hit points back. Um, but you can roll your hit die to regain hit points. So they're basically, um, every level when you level up, you roll a specific dice that is dictated by what class you are to gain more health. 
you can roll that same dice um, a couple of times every time you short rest to get a certain amount of health back. So yours is 1d8. You have two of those. So I guess it's 2d8 that you can roll to regain that many hit points. Just from okay. chilling out. I believe... I okay, she said roll 2d8s? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna actually roll two different d8s at the same time. See if this yields better results. I got a 5 and a 1. 5 and a 1, so you regain 6 hit points. Nice. Yeah, I don't actually know what you were at before, so... I'd be honest, I don't either. You're back to full then, there we go. <laughs> Yay! Congrats. You were missing Perfect. exactly 6 hit points. Look at that, what a coincidence. <laughs> what a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> so you and Octavia, Octavia also healed back to full. Um, you and Octavia patch up your injuries and rest and talk for a while. And um, the blacksmith comes back with a, a number of weapons balanced a num on a number of body parts that she probably shouldn't be balancing large, sharp weapons <laughs> on. And you can see that Octavia's glaive is shining and sharp as well as her dagger. And um, she seems to be very proud of her work as she hands you your shield, um, which now has some studs on it. <gasps> so what I will do is with your shield, if you want to make an unarmed strike, you can use your shield as a weapon, and it will increase the die from 1d4 to 1d6. Oh, nice. You can do, like, a shield bash. Yeah, let's go. And I'm marking that down. And um, she pulls out your war hammer, and you can see that in the hammer are embedded these little um, these little points that almost look like they're made of, of a blue glass. And uh, she sort of sets the hammer down, and you, you can tell it's not glass based on the fact that it doesn't shatter immediately on the cobblestones. It looks like whatever the studs are made of is quite sturdy, but they are these beautiful um, deep blue bits of, of what looks to be glass to you. Um, and that Amazing. is going to increase your hammer's hit die to a d12. Amazing! nice right. there you are thank you so much this is better than the day i got it i swear well, as if i can remember welcome. i do know my way around hammers and shields and she seems very proud of her handiwork here i you should be proud it is such an honor well it's an honor working for such heroes thank you kindly Thank you. And she returns back to her blacksmithing shop to repair pickaxes and stuff. Um, and you can see Octavia looking over her glaive and her, her fancy new dagger, and she seems pretty pleased with it. Amazing. Are you ready to head on out? I think I am. All right. Onward I to like your patron. Yeah, every single time. Wait, say that again. I feel like I do a different voice for Octavia every single time I speak. It's <laughs> I mean, I do a different voice, I feel like, every time, too, so no worries. We're it's just fine. having fun. We change it up. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, off to my patron. Oh, I just realized I don't have the uh, music playing the same song. Whoops, there we go. I fixed it. <laughs> Yay. It's going through all of them. Um... Now is a, would be a good time for a break oh. if you want to take one, or we could take one after the next encounter if you wanted to instead. Because I don't see. think the next one's going to take super long. Uh, let's. I'm feeling one more encounter and then a break. One more encounter? All right. You begin to head through town towards the forest to set back off on your quest to find the temple for Octavia's patron. And as you walk, um, you can see a, a dwarf uh, wave, uh, waving you over towards the side of the road. Let's. Hi, let's go, let's go make sure he's okay. All right, uh, you head on over towards this dwarf, and um, he, he sort of looks around, like, warily and says, You you two fight, right? You, you help in the mines? Uh, yeah, yeah, we do. I've got a little bit of a problem in the attic of my shop. I, I own the general store. Well, hi, what, what can we do for you? Well... There's weird creatures in the attic. They've been living there for a while, and they've never been a problem, but recently they've started making a racket, destroying things, and really upsetting the patrons of our shop. I, I, if you could, like, take a look and maybe clear them out, that'd be really nice. Sure. I mean, we can, the worst we can do is try. All right, I really appreciate it. And he, he motions for you to, to come along towards his store. 
All right, let's go. All right, um, you and Octavia follow along, and you don't have to go very far before you head into the general store, uh, which is pretty empty right now due to everybody sort of helping with the the injuries at the moment and seeing the general commotion that is going on. Makes uh, sense. But you head inside the the small shop. Um, you can see a number of both processed and unprocessed ores off to one side. There's some fruit towards the back um, and foods of all different kinds running up and down the aisles. And he leads you over to a ladder that heads up towards the top of the shop. Okay, up we go. All right, just just be careful, okay? Okay, you're making me nervous. Well, it's, I'm sure it's fine. I mean, you got the hammer, she's got the sword and, and activity goes it's a glaive <laughs> <laughs> it, i got a shield at least right maybe yeah, the shield we'll, will save fine. me we're all we're all healed up you know we'll be good all right let's go up how how's this ladder looking are we, are we talking about like a rickety ladder or pretty sturdy it's sort of like more pull down steps than a ladder oh okay Okay. So you think you'll be fine going up there. Neither of you is like a dragonborn or anything, so it's probably not gonna like, you know, give out or anything. You'll be good. Okay, cool. Up we go. Alright, All right, you two ascend the ladder. Um, do you wanna go first or second? Guess I should go first. <laughs> you can go first if you want. As you head up the ladder cautiously, shield raised, ready for whatever may be on the other side, you make your way up into the attic, and there's a window at the far side with, uh, with sunlight streaming through, lighting up the place, uh, and in the darker spots, you're able to see quite well with your dark vision. For a moment, all you can really see is boxes of wares, um, there's, there's some hay in one of the corners just sort of piled up, perhaps for horses that are traveling through, um, and then you hear a little, a little, um, almost chirping sound. You hear that, Octavia? I, I think so. And she sort of like pushes past you and just like bolts into the attic, um, heading towards <laughs> the window side, which is where you heard the sound from. All right, I'm, I'm following her. As you make your way over there, you see Octavia is crouched down in front of um what is easily the largest bird you've ever seen in your entire life. This would easily come up to your waist um, standing upright. And you are oh, six wow. feet tall. Holy shit. <laughs> it's one big bird. Yeah, and you you can see that there is not just one kneeling in front or in front of where Octavia is kneeling, but there's at least three there as you're as you're approaching that you can see um have sort of hopped out from behind some crates. Oh she, wow! She motions for you to come over there and like uh, kneel with her in front of the birds. All right. I mean, um, as you kneel down, you find. Let me look at your languages. That you, the birds are are making some strange noises, and you can tell that this is not a normal bird call. But it, it, you can't understand exactly what's going on. And Octavia sort of looks at you almost expectantly, and and says like, "This is a bit unusual, don't you think?" I think I. It almost sounds familiar. Just they're, slightly off. They're talking birds. They're 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 speaking to me. I, yeah. I guess you don't speak the language. But they, they're a little upset. Why are they upset? Well, they say they've been living in the attic for a while. And one of the pigeon, like, interrupts her to say some more things. And she, she sort of, like, motions for it to quiet down. She says, they say they've been living up here for a while, totally fine and peacefully. And then they say that, what was his name? And the pigeon makes, like, a, a jumble of syllables. And she repeats the jumble of syllables as, as if it would mean something to you. And then says, it's been mm -hmm. kind of a jerk lately. And it's really riling all of them up. Huh. What's he been doing? I guess just, just, and the pigeon interrupts her again and starts, like, chirping out these, these strange, um, harsh syllables that, that it almost makes you a little uncomfortable the way that the, this language sounds. Like, it puts you on edge, um, as the pigeon sort of goes off on this little tirade. She, she turns to you and goes, I don't know if I can repeat what that pigeon <laughs> just said, but <laughs> it's not, it's nothing great. I mean, he's over there, and she points towards the far end of the attic where you just came from. Oh snap! Yeah. What can we What can we do to fix this? We could kill him. Do Do we want to kill him? Well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe we could convince him to live somewhere else. If he's being kind of a dick, like we could get get him out of here and send him somewhere else. Yeah, I guess. I guess. What What about the store? 
Well, and the pigeon interrupts her again in this this babbling language, and she says, "I they say that if the other pigeon is gone, then then they'll be fine and they'll be they'll be peaceful up here and they won't bother anyone." Okay, then I guess so. All right, and she leads the way across the attic, and the other the other strange large bird sort of hop back behind their crates. Um, and you can see now that that there is um, a form sort of behind the um, behind the trap door that is lifted up as you cross the attic back over to the other side. Okay, wait for context. Mm -hmm. Are they asking me to kill the guy, like the dude? No, they're asking you to kill this pigeon. They're like that guy. Is oh, not here anymore. I was so confused. I thought they wanted me to kill the guy that got us, like that no, brought not us. The guy that got you. No, so there's there's like oh. a pigeon going on here. Okay, that makes so much more sense. Okay, he's like the bad roommate pigeon in the attic. Oh, okay. Yeah, you gotta go, bud. You gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> you and Octavia make your way over to the pigeon and she relays the, the message of you gotta go, bud, to this pigeon in whatever language they're speaking. Um, and the pigeon just sort of like cocks his head at her for a moment and then turns to you and goes, did you understand any of that? No, but I did understand that. And Octavia sort of looks at you almost almost surprised, and it seems that she she whatever language you're speaking right now to this bird, she cannot understand it. Okay. Octavia, I don't yeah. think he understands you. Well, the other ones did. I maybe that's what's up. They can't talk to each other. And well, yeah, you're speaking dwarvish to this one. Dwarvish. This one speaks yeah. dwarvish? Yeah, I mean, it's in a dwarf town. I guess it makes sense. Huh. Those guys speak infernal. I don't know where they got that from. I... I have no idea. I makes no sense to me. It's all Greek to me at this point. How it works. Honestly, that's so. me out of character at this point. <laughs> I'm a little lost. Okay, but I... I guess... Let me talk to him and see... See what's going on. All right, okay, so then... yeah, go, go for it. Hey man, it's my turn to give the speech. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey man, you gotta go. Go? Where? Why? I. They say you're stirring up some trouble here, and I was hoping maybe we could find you a place to go. They're the ones always yelling at me about something or other. I don't know. I can't understand them. Well, yeah. That's. They say in the same for you. Well, they say you're always to go. I've been living here all my life. Hmm. That's a good question. Let's go see. Octavia. He said yeah. he's been living here his whole life, and they're stirring up trouble too, and he can't understand them. Oh. How are we gonna find them another place to stay? Hmm. Why don't we why don't we go look around town and see if there's any good spots for, for him to go to? Yeah, let's do that. All right. What would be a good uh, place for them? You could roll a nature check to see what you know about these birds and where you think they'd like to live. Let's go, because I have no clue. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna lie, I'm really lost. But I rolled a 19, so I guess I'm gonna be less lost. You are gonna be less lost. So you think that these birds are a bit unusual just in general these are extremely large first of all you you know that birds don't really get this big right um, so you think that something else is going on here that has made these birds both large and able to speak various languages um you do think that the the general um mayhem that's happening in the attic is being caused by some of them speaking infernal and some of them speaking dwarvish which are just two different languages basically it's like some of them speak in german some of them speak in spanish and they just kind of get in fights about it because they can't understand each other okay um, and um so the so you think that these birds um that it's not unusual for them to be sort of taking roost in an attic, but you think that they'd probably be just as happy in, in trees outside or in perhaps another attic. Um, yeah. Okay. Hey, Octavia, let's go take a look around. See if maybe we could find a tree or something. Hey, yeah, let's, let's take a look. Um, and you guys descend down the ladder and, um, the dwarf who brought you here, it seems to be busy at the counter at the moment. Hey, we're gonna head, 
head on out. We're gonna be right back. Don't mind us. Oh. Okay, sounds good. And he turns back to his customers. All right, let's you go. Head out onto the street. Uh, where would you like to look for a good tree? Um. Hmm. So this is in the very middle of town. Or wait, yeah, is this in the, town? in the dead center by the fountain? Okay. It's safe to assume there's not a bunch of trees right here. Uh, there's forest all around the edge of the town, but not really like in town. Okay. Then I guess let's let's go to the forest. Let's see what we can find. All right, you head up the path um, towards the forest to the east of town, and go ahead and roll perception for me. Twelve. Twelve plus I think six. Yeah, six. Um, yeah, you take a look around and begin inspecting trees, and um, you find one that you think looks kind of good, and then you realize that this bird is freaking massive, and it's, it's maybe a little small for him. Uh, and you take another look around and find a nice big tree, but you think the branches might be a little bit fragile to hold his weight. And then you're able to find a nice tall oak tree that looks like it's got some pretty sturdy branches that, that a very large bird would be able to set up a very large nest on. Octavia. This look good to you? This looks like the one to me. And she sort of looks up at the tree and studies it for a moment and goes, Yeah, I think this one's good. Let's uh -huh. look at it. And she, she says the, whatever his name is in Infernal that you just cannot comprehend even being spoken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go. All right. And you guys head back to the dwarven store and up into the attic to talk to the birds. All right. So I'm going to go talk to... The one I can talk to, I guess. Yeah, which talk to when you can talk to. First of all, hey, we're back. What's your name, by the way? My, my name? Yeah. Well, I'm just a bird. I don't really, I don't really have one, I guess. You don't have one. No, not not really. I, I don't know. Oh. Well, do you want a name? Sure, I guess I could have a name. <laughs> hmm, what, we could do? what should we call you? I think you need a name in your own language. Hmm. Say that again? I think he needs a name in his own language. Aww. Since he apparently has one in somebody else's. Uh -huh. You can kind of deduce that maybe it's not so much a name as an insult that they're calling him. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> Well, friend, you're going to be friend with a P for Pigeon. Like, P-H. Oh, friend with a P for Pigeon? I love yes. that. And he's, he seems to enjoy his name and, and gives sort of like the bird version of a nod. Um, and then says, well, did you find a new home for me? I did indeed. You're not going to believe this. The best tree in town. Oops. Well, I can certainly <laughs> set up for worse than the best tree in town. And Let's go. It seems to be over chatting with the other pigeons and explaining the situation to them at the moment. All right. Should Octavia, do you want to go with us or do you want to stay here with them? Well, I'll stay here. I'm explaining everything. Infernal, okay. it takes a while to say things. Lots of syllables. That's so valid. We'll be right back. Okay. Um, and this massive bird hops over and climbs up onto your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> Let's go to you your tree. Descend, you descend the ladder safely into the middle of this store with a toddler-sized bird perched on your shoulder, and everything just kind of goes quiet as everyone watches you like walk through. No one says a word as you walk through the store with this giant dark bird on your shoulder, um, and someone gives the door for you as you head on out. <laughs> thank you, thank you, and to the older. I'll be right back. All right. <laughs> Okay. So you said we're going the east? Out through the streets and head, yes, head over to the east um, where you take the bird back to the tree that you found. Nice. Look, how's this? Well, this is perfect. And he flies up off your shoulder and into the tree. Awesome. Well, I'm he glad we could find you a better home. A little, explore it a little and, and then seems to settle on in. I think it was a little too crowded up there anyways. This seems way more your style. More open, he, he says in agreement. 
Awesome. Is there anything else I can do for you, friend? I think I'm alright, but I appreciate you being nice to me. Those birds in the attic, they're so mean. I, I So I'm hearing. I'm so sorry. I think I'm gonna head back to my friend now, though. All right. My other Thanks friend. For the tree. Thank you. And I'm gonna head back to the general store. Alright. Um, you make your way back in and are able to collect Octavia to continue out on your journey. So, how'd it go, Octavia? Yeah, pretty good, I think. They, you know, they they were still talking, but oh my goodness, does that infernal take a while? So, yeah, I just kind of left. You know what? Fair enough. I'm ready to head they, on out. They said they'll be quiet, though, so I think I think we're good. Okay. Should we tell the owner? Oh, I told him. I told him. That oh, was you after told him? I left the, the birds. <laughs> oh, he perfect, perfect. Awesome. Let's head on out. All right. And you guys head out of the store and out towards the forest. And that is where we can take our break. Awesome. Hello. Hi. Hi Welcome, guys. Rebecca. This is my friend, Rebecca. Thank oh, you. Rebecca. You came in at the best and worst time. We're going to take a quick little break. But hi. We got to see the pigeon adventure. Yes, you got to see the pigeons. All right, so let's pause real quick because I need a break. All right, we will take a quick break and be right back. See y'all soon.
Hello, hello. I have water again. Gotta stay hydrated for this. Okay, let me get settled back in and we'll get back to it. I am going to pull this back up. I hope everybody's having a good day so far. And also, thank you to the chatters, lurkers, and VOD viewers, whether you're watching this on Twitch or on YouTube. I haven't said it today, but I've, I've been pleasantly surprised. I'm not going to lie. I was not prepared for there to be VOD viewers on YouTube, and there were. So, that burger, thank you for the follow, and holy shit. Okay, we have reached our follower goal. Okay. So, I need to get on that poll. Okay, I was starting a poll at one point in time to do a follower stream. Or viewers pick my stream. I mean, I did a follower stream in the past. Okay, well, Congrats. thank you. Thank you so much, I guess. Hello, welcome in. Thank Hi. you so much, Burger. I hope you're having a good day today. Let's see if I can do this there we go that's your boyfriend oh well thank you hello nice to meet you i think <laughs> sort of wait is this i okay i think i know who this is now oh all right are you ready day mm -hmm. i'm i'm very excited okay all right you set off into the woods continuing towards the temple um, as you travel, you notice pretty quickly that the forest seems happier and healthier, and there's no rot to be seen. Nice. It looks so much better. It really does. It's uh, remarkable how much of a difference certain things can make. Yeah, for real. Do you still have that box, by the way? Yeah, yeah I've got the box. And okay. she seems sort of amused by you calling it a box as she, <laughs> as she pulls it out of her bag. Nice. I guess your patron's gonna love it, huh? Oh yeah, I'm gonna give it to my- I'm gonna give it to my patron. Oh, okay, I'm gonna pause real quick. Thank you so much for the bits. Oh my goodness. Thank you, I appreciate it. Holy shit. Alright. It'll help us prepare for our adventure. What if we could like- I wish there was a way we could just like magically teleport golden for bits or something. <laughs> I if only. Give you gold. I'm the <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, Thank you. Have ten gold for the biddies. Yay! I will mark it for you. There you go. Wait for real. Oh my goodness, I love yeah. that. Yeah. Please. Awesome. All right. Um. Yeah, you continue forward. Um, with her, she's got the box tucked away now. Um. And yeah, she says, "Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it to my patron." Awesome. How far away are we, by the way? About halfway there. Oh, wow. We're only halfway there? It's not that far. <sighs> I guess. I mean, we have gotten a little sidetracked. Yeah, it's fine. Just like two more days of traveling. Maybe three tops. All right. Well, then we better get on it then. Yeah, we better get on it. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness, thank you so much. Thank Holy you. Holy crap, thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, both of you. Oh my goodness, I really appreciate it. <laughs> Aww. Alright. Onward. Sorry, I'm putting hearts in the chat. There we go. <laughs> oh, thank you, yes. Alright. Um, you continue on for, for a little while with relatively nothing remarkable occurring um you you continue through the forest and it sort of starts to open up into um more of a field than a forest there's still occasional trees um but it's a little more open and you're more just wading through tall grass at this point as you you continue onward um as you travel through these uh through the these plains you you spot something glinting in the distance and as you make your way towards it closer and closer you realize that it 
it's something made of metal. Ooh, shiny. Of. Yeah, very shiny. You know, I want to go investigate. <laughs> All right. As you approach this, go ahead and roll me an investigation check. See what you can see. Eleven. Eleven plus one. You don't have great investigation. I'm sorry. Oh, no. That's okay. <laughs> Eleven. Uh, this one is 12. You you take a look at this and you realize that it is a mangled sculpture that may have once been a tree or a bush. And it's strange to find something like this out in the plains. Uh, but you, you do see that it's been surrounded, that it is surrounded by small piles of uh, warped metal and useless junk, uh, implying it might have been dumped here as as part of like a, a almost a dumping yard. Um, huh. Like a trash yard. Yeah. What am I, what word am I? A saying? dump? You know what I mean. Yeah, I guess we, we just call it the dump here. <laughs> I don't know if that's a southern thing. The way that the branches are warped, there are a lot of, of metal leaves sort of poking out in different directions. They look kind of sharp, but you do notice that there are some in different colors. You're able to spot a red one in the um, mass of leaves. I'm so sorry, I got a little distracted. I'm not gonna lie. But you said there was. Did you say there was a red one? Yeah, so as you're looking through the leaves, um, most of them are just a plain silver metal that's sort of tarnished and a little bit rusted now. And the, they all look quite sharp, but you do spot one of a different color in there. A, a couple of different colors, but you're able to make out a red one throughout the branches. I want that one. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> uh, what do you want to do to that one? Um, I guess I'm gonna... Can I, like, grab it? Is it safe to touch? You can try. Or I guess yeah, investigate. What is this check? I'm looking at the checks here. Mm. Oh, for context, should we f we should maybe fill them in as well on oh, like yeah. backstory slash I don't know yeah, my I'll character sheet. <laughs> I'll give them a rundown real quick. So the plot hook that I have used when I was making this adventure is the, the classic one of you wake up on a ship, you don't know who you are, you don't know where you are, you don't know why you are. And um, we've taken it a step further in that Caleb does not have his character sheet. I have his character sheet. I made his character for him. And um, he is slowly, as his character remembers things and as things become relevant, he's learning more about his own character. So he's learned his class, he's learned his race, um, he's learned his subclass, his health, and um, he's slowly learning things like his speed and um, like his modifiers as we're going on through the, uh, through the campaign. But yeah, he's learning his own character's backstory and motivations um, alongside the rest of you because his character has no memories. Yes, so I genuinely don't know a lot of these things. Yeah, so so far, to give like the quick rundown, um, he woke up on a on the boat with no memories, and he woke up with this woman named Octavia, who is has decided that her warlock patron should be able to restore his memories, and they're heading towards the temple now and have gotten into some shenanigans along the way. Yes. So ultimately, that is where I'm headed. Yes, so yeah, so you um are gonna reach into this bush and try and grab this red leaf. Um roll me What are you good at? Uh, roll, make me a survival <laughs> check. Oh, okay. An eight. That eight is a new one. Four for your survival is a twelve. Um as you reach through, you do get cut by a couple of the leaves, dealing one point of slashing damage to you. Um, but you're able to grab the red leaf, and as you try and pull it back, you realize that it doesn't really- it, you can't really pull it out. Octavia, can you- can you help me with this? Yeah, what- what do you want me to do? What is this? I gotta know. It's like a sculpture of some kind, I don't- I don't know. And she kind of looks around the back and then says, Hey, there's a- there's an orange leaf back here. Huh. Let's check it out. Is there a you rainbow? Your and make your way around to the back, and you do see an orange leaf back there now that you've pointed it out. Um, and you spot above it a yellow leaf. Oh! I I think that's a rainbow. But why is it here? I'm not sure. It's it's strange. It very strange. It's gotta mean something though. Yeah. 
and she reaches in and and tries to pull out the orange leaf and isn't really able to. Um, but as she's maneuvering it, you can see that it twists slightly in her hand. Huh? Do all the leaves twist like that? I I don't know. She reaches up and grabs the yellow one, and it turns easily. Huh? Fascinating. Yeah. And she grabs the orange one again and tries to wiggle it, but it doesn't really move. Okay, so. I assume there's got to be the rest of the rainbow, right? Roll me a perception so, check to take a look around. Okay. 16. 16. As you begin to inspect the bush, you aren't able to see any other particularly colored leaves. Oh, interesting. It seems to just be red, yellow, and orange. Red, yellow, and orange. Okay. Then can we try to twist the red leaf? I don't think we've done that yet. Okay. Yeah, go, uh, go around the other side and twist that one. And you All go right. around and are able to maneuver inward and turn the red leaf easily. Huh. Anything happen? Oh, the yellow leaf snapped back. It's like back to normal now. Huh. I still can't turn the orange one, though. Weird. Okay, what if we turn these back all the way? In the orange? To... I don't know. I don't know. I, was the yellow one turned before the orange? So do the... So she turned the yellow one, and when you turned the red one, the yellow one unturned itself, and she still can't turn the orange one. Okay, but the orange one has been tried to be turned while both of them have been unturned, if that makes sense? Yep, and it won't turn. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, the, so she was trying to twist the, the... Like, when you twisted the red one, it, it unturned the yellow one, basically. Okay. Interesting. So if I try to twist the yellow or orange one, would the red go back? I don't know. And she tries to twist the orange one, and you can hear, like, clicking over there. And she says, the orange one won't turn. Huh, what about the yellow? And as she twists the yellow one, the red one twists back. Okay. Is there anything else around? Can we, like, investigate the area? Yeah, you can investigate the area. Go ahead and roll investigation or perception. You're better at perception, so probably roll that one. Perception it is. An eight. <laughs> Eight plus six. Um, as you take a look around, you find other scraps of metal laying in piles around this thing. Some of them look like they could have come from perhaps a different sort of sculpture, but none look like they are part of the bush. Hmm. Can we investigate them further? See if, like, I don't know, like, pick them up, see if they do anything? You can pick them up and, like, bring them over to the bush if you want. Um, as you gather some scraps of metal and bring them over to the bush, they don't really seem to have an effect on it. Um, and as you inspect the bush, it doesn't really look like there's a spot to insert anything or add any metal to it. Huh. That's odd. What if I just, like, abandon it, just walk away and leave? <laughs> <laughs> you can. Uh, you could also roll a religion check to see if you can get some guidance from your god. <gasps> Ooh, okay. Oh, I got a four. <laughs> There's no uh, saving me. Plus three makes it a seven. Um, and as you um, sort of like try and channel this god that you don't even really know or understand yourself, um, for those who are new in chat, he does not know whose god is yet. Um, Do not. You, you aren't really able to get much, um, but, it, but you, you think that you see the color orange a little bit for a second, and that's, that's kind of it. Like, in the metal? The um, other metal? sort of... Like, almost tinting your vision. Oh. Whoa. Can you, like, yeah. pull the orange thing out? Let me try. And Octavia grabs the orange leaf and, and gives it a tug, but it doesn't seem like it's going anywhere. Can you push it in? As she pushes in on the orange leaf, you hear a click. Ah... It's just going the wrong way. I do that all the time. Try and turn the red one again. See what happens. Okay, I'm turning the red one. As you turn the red one, you hear another click. Then the yellow, I guess. As Octavia turns the yellow one, the leaves sort of unfold outwards, and, and you can hear sort of creaking as this structure that, that has been mangled and warped starts to sort of unwarp itself and open up in a way that it really is struggling to now. Um, and as it opens, you um, find inside a small wooden box. Oh, nice. Let's open it. As you open this, this sort of worn jewelry box, you find two rings inside. Nice. And you can see that they are glittering with some sort of enchantment. 
Okay. Can I investigate to see what it is? You can roll Arcana to or... see what it is. Yes. Or you could... I think you have Detect oh. Magic. I might end up needing that because I rolled a 2. You're going to need that. Your Arcana is only plus 1, so it's a 3. <laughs> okay. You said, what was it? Seek Magic or something like that? Detect Magic. Detect yeah. Magic. Okay. Yes, I want to use that. Okay, so Detect Magic is a spell you can actually ritual cast. So ritual casting spells are are basically, there's two ways to cast certain spells. You can use your spell slot to cast it, or you can sit down and perform a ritual that takes about Ooh. 10 minutes, and you can cast the spell without a spell slot. Okay. So uh, since you're not going anywhere, you might as well ritual cast this thing. Yeah, let's do it. You sit down and perform the ritual required to cast Detect Magic, and um, all around you, things begin to light up with the auras of the magic within them. Um, you can see your own and Octavia's um, glowing magical aura, and around the rings, you can see some strong magic. And um, you think that this would let you add a point somewhere on your character sheet, so you can Ooh. increase anything you want by one basically and you don't have to use that right now you can you can just remember that you have it and save it for okay later. yeah i'm gonna do that later because it's gonna be a big decision <laughs> okay is that for both of them they both do that because mm -hmm. you said there was two rings right yep there's two i assume one for octavia and one for me mm -hmm. okay cool i mean you're welcome to try and take them both <laughs> mm well she did just get her glaive sharpened though yeah i'm not i'm not ready to test her <laughs> i don't think i'm really in the in the position to probably not okay cool can i find out anything else or is there um, anything else not that you can see okay then i guess we'll just pack it up and let's go all right um you continue through the plains um, and the grass sort of starts to turn into brush as you make your way along, um, just sort of heading in the direction that Octavia is leading you. Uh, nice. Presumably towards the temple. Um, you walk for some time, and um, after a while, you stop and you eat some rations before you continue on again. Um, and you have just some just some of the leftover crab things as you, and then continue back along your way. Perfect. As you walk for a while. Um, go ahead and roll me perception just to see what you can see. Okay. I rolled a two again. Okay, I'm switching these out. <laughs> You're uh, going to jail. That's an eight. Um, so as you walk along with your perception roll of an eight, you do not see the spike pit trap until you are already in it. Um, oh no! Walk, the ground falls out from under you, and roll me a dexterity saving throw. That's still a d20, right? Yep. Okay uh nine that's on the bottom okay um and it's dex so plus one makes it a 10 um as you fall you are able to maneuver out of the way of the spikes so that you aren't stabbed by any of them but you are at the bottom of a pit now um and you oh, see no. octavia sort of leaps back as the ground tumbles out and is able to avoid falling into the pit that's good at least hi how are you I, doing down there uh well I don't think I'm hurt, at least. You got oh, a rope? Uh, rope. Yes, rope. And she uh, sort of disappears off to the side and then returns um, with with a length of rope. I guess I should find something to tie it to. Hang on. Um, and she disappears off to the side again as you're, you're sort of stuck down in this pit. And I'll say it's about... You're six feet tall. We'll say it's about 15 feet deep. Okay. Um, and you, you can sort of hear her rustling about above you as she's, she's trying to affix the rope to something. Um, and you're down there for a, for a minute or two, um, just sort of, just sort of waiting for her to come back with the rope and you hear her scream. Oh no. Are you good up there? Uh, you do not hear a response, but you do hear some clanging and then, um, the unmistakable sound of a glaive hitting a shield. Oh, I know that sound. <laughs> What would you like to do? Can I, is there any, can I like investigate the area like around me down there? Did oh, anybody? No, I assume I'm not the first one to fall here. Right? Probably not. <laughs> oh, I rolled a two though, so. <laughs> rolled a two? Oh no. <laughs> uh, you're not seeing a whole lot down here. Um, 
as you as you look around, you do see the spikes protruding up off of the floor. Um, ah. And you see your own just sort of equipment that, that you have right now. But you can't really see anything extra. Anything do extra. I have a rope? You do have a rope. Yeah. Can I make a lasso and try to like lasso up onto a high up spike? Yeah, um, you take your rope and you tie it into a loop and go ahead and roll me... Um, I'm trying to give you interesting checks. Make a sleight of hand check to try and lasso something. Okay. 11. 11 plus 1 makes it a 12. As you throw the lasso up, you can feel it catch on something and it seems sturdy enough to climb. All right, let's go. <laughs> All right, and you make your way out of the pit, and you can see Octavia locked in a, in what seems to be a pretty daring combat with what to you honestly looks like a really big frog person. It is it is an upright standing bright yellow frog creature that um is is swinging around a very big hammer. I'll bet hammer on hammer. Let's go. <laughs> I have a war hammer, by the way. Awesome. Let's go. Uh, yes, hammer, hammer versus hammer. Let's let's do it. Oh wait. What would you like to do first? Mm -hmm. Combat music. Let's go. Ooh, combat music. Let's go. All right, I'm gonna go with the war hammer, and I got a seven. Seven plus four. Uh, that is not gonna. <laughs> oh no. As Shit. you swing your warhammer, the duo locked in combat just sort of, like, maneuvers off to the side and your hammer swings by them. Can I, like, roundhouse kick them or something? Yeah, go ahead and roll the roundhouse kick. 17! There we oh, go. You can do your shield bash. You got your new shield. Oh, wait, can I do that instead? Can that still count? Yeah, so you'll just yes. roll your d6 and hit them with the shield instead of your d4. Okay. Uh, gotta find... Oh, literally this. Okay. It's just the normal one. Two. Two? All right. Um, two plus two is four. <laughs> so you deal <laughs> four damage as you bash into this guy with your shield. Um, nice. And, and sort of send him stumbling. And as you do, Octavia is able to get um, a hit in with her glaive. Dealing... Eight points of damage. Damn. I have so many character sheets right now. That's amazing. <laughs> okay. Um It is our little frog boy's turn. Okay, let's go. And he we can take is him. gonna need both of you to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh no, okay. Ooh, I got a six. <laughs> okay, well you're gonna take full damage then. Shit. Um, as he is locked in this combat with Octavia, you watch as these balls of darkness sort of flit up around him and begin swirling around all three of you. Um, and as they sort of fly past you, you, you can feel little scratches and cuts as they fly uh -huh. past. And they are dealing... 12 points of damage. Necrotic. Damn, okay. Then that's his turn, right? Yep, that is his turn. It is now your turn. What would you like to do? I'm gonna go in with the Warhammer again. All right, roll to hit. Eleven. Eleven plus four hits. Uh, go ahead and nice. remember your damage is one d twelve plus two. Oh yeah, because it went up. It did go up. Yes, did I got my. Things sharpened. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got a 10. 10? Awesome. Plus... Sorry, I was taking a drink. Plus 2. Nice. And I can do this. Yes. Go. Okay. Um, you swing your warhammer towards the frog boy, clashing into his armor um, and sending him sprawling. He's able to scurry back up, but you can see a dent in his plate armor. Um, what would you like to do for your bonus action? Um, uh, hmm. I don't like my health right now. <laughs> I would <laughs> really like to heal up. Um, okay, you can healing word yourself. Okay, I can healing word myself. Mm -hmm. Alakazam. 
<laughs> All right. Um, do you want me to roll or do you want to roll? Uh, I'm gonna let you roll. Okay. Well, I rolled a four, so that is a good a good choice. So you regained yes. eight points. Nice. What are you at right now? Uh, so I lost twelve points. I was at twenty before, right? So I was at eight. So that makes sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. Noted. All right. <laughs> um, it's now Octavia's turn. Um, you watch as she swings her glaive, clanging off of his, uh, his plate armor, but not dealing damage. And then she swings it upwards, catching him under the armor. Um, and nice. Damage to him. And it is now his turn. And you need to make another wisdom saving throw. Okay. Man, Octavia's rolling really good on these wisdom saves. <laughs> Uh, I am not. I rolled a three. All right, you're taking more damage. Okay, you're going to jail, and this one's coming back. Okay. Um, he deals 18 points of damage. Oh, shit, I'm down. So let me explain <laughs> how this works to you. <laughs> yes, you're please. Down at zero hit points right now so so we we ignore the the minus two that applied it's just, you're just at zero okay so um you are you now have the downed condition so how this works is you are you are literally physically on the ground your okay. only movement is falling you can crawl five feet every turn um which is like not very far you can normally go about 30 so you're you're okay. slightly reduced um, gotcha you every turn you will roll a death saving throw um, like at the start of your own turn and it is first to three if you fail three you are dead if you succeed on three first you are alive and stable at one hit point you're back on your feet basically okay you can take an action if you would like to but you will automatically fail a death saving throw to do so oh yes oh shit so, I'm gonna give you a little tip here, which is that your action yes. can be to heal yourself back up to like standing. That's what I was wondering if that would work. Yeah, so you can auto fail a death saving throw to cast like cure wounds on yourself, and then you'd be back up and chilling. So. Oh, I forgot. Cure wounds was a thing. Okay. Yeah, because you got you got healies. Cool. Then. Do I have to do a? Being knocked down. I oh. yes. Let's so go. Exciting. You've never been down before. I haven't. Okay, so. Do I have to do a saving throw before I do nope. the action? Uh, so since you're since you're taking the action, you just automatically fail one. And oh, okay. Heal yourself, then you can heal yourself back up, so it won't matter. <laughs> oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So once you're back up, it resets to to zero of zero fails and zero saves. Okay. Oh, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So I literally forgot what it is again. Your wounds. Right. Yeah, your wounds. So that's an action. Yes. Um, it's one d eight plus four. I wrote that very poorly, but it's okay. This okay. is a d eight two. Two. So you will regain six hit points. So you'll be up at six. All right. And then, since you're back up, if you wanted to, you could also take a bonus action. Um. Hmm. I'm trying to think, because I know I only have a certain amount of spell slots, right? You've got two more. I have two more? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I don't remember which... The problem is I don't remember where Cure Wounds was and how often I could use that. Because I would like Cure to use it again. Two. So you only have first level spell slots right now. So you have four of those in total. You've used two. Cure Wounds is an action. So you've used your action. You have your bonus action. Oh, oh, but the... I can't use the spell slots, can I? Or that's what it's dependent on? What I can so, use as a bonus um, action? So the, I the forgot. spell slots is, is sort of like representative of the amount of energy it takes to cast a spell and how much you have. So you, at your current level, have enough energy to cast four spells before you can't cast anymore. You need to just rest before you're able to cast anymore. Um, okay. Your action and bonus action dictate how long you have in combat to do something before the enemy does something back. Okay, so I am able so to do that. Every round of combat is six seconds long. So, oh. um, like, while you're going, you, so you take your action, that's four seconds. Your bonus action is two seconds. 
um, while you're doing that, Octavia in the same four seconds is doing her action and in the same two seconds is then doing her bonus action. And then it's the same with the enemy. It's all happening within the same six seconds, but we do the turns to sort of like, you know, so not everyone's yeah. shouting at once what they're doing. That makes sense. Okay. <laughs> all right, then. Um... So you've got your bonus action. You got two seconds to do something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh... <laughs> So healing word is a bonus action. That's um, a spell, or you could shield bash. Um, yeah. Okay, because I'm trying to think if I want to. This, because he's been taking some damage on me, so I really I should use healing word. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. And do you want me to roll it, or do you want to roll it? I want you to roll. Okay, that's good because I can lie about what this says. It says four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I can't lie. No, you cannot. <laughs> the die don't you lie. Roll. It'll definitely say four if I roll it. <laughs> I love that. Yes. Yeah. Yay. Uh, anyway, it said three. You know, it was close enough to four. We that thank you, thank you. You had, you had a little advantage. Yes. It's for the first down. Your, your god intervened and, and gave you that extra <gasps> point. Yes. I am, I am god. <laughs> <laughs> So that's right. that's the secret lore. The you are the god. Lore, I'm, I've been the god the whole time. <laughs> yes. Okay, All so right, that was both of my moves, right? A yeah. pretty stuttery hit on this on this boy with her glaive. Um, and her second hit clangs off of his armor. He's sort of able to shoulder it away. Okay. It is his turn. You're gonna need to make. Well, actually, he needs to make a concentration saving throw. Okay, you watch as as she hits him with her glaive, the balls of darkness dissipate around him. So you don't have to make your wisdom saving throw. Ooh, okay. Nice. Good job. Yeah. Um. He's then gonna do a little, little hammer swing. Um, and he swings his warhammer at you, and it clangs off of your shield, uh, nearly deafening you with just the sound and the force of this impact. But you don't take any damage. It is not nice. your turn. All right, warhammer. Wait, yeah, I'm up. I can not You're throw good. that. Send it. <laughs> Send it. it. I got a five. <laughs> <laughs> they do not it. like um, me. You swing your hammer, and it clangs off of his plate armor. It doesn't seem to deal any damage. What would you like for your bonus action? I'm gonna kick him. All right, roll the kick. Seventeen. The kick works, right? Seventeen hits. Um, go ahead and roll me your damage. And that is which one? I'm so sorry. Oh, d six. D six. Okay. Two. Two plus two. Um, nice. Slam your shield into him, sending him stumbling back. And yes. Octavia's turn. Perfect. Okay. E. What is her modifier here? That is the question. Ooh, okay. Octavia swings her glaive and um you watch as as this sort of there's this big flourish of motion in front of you this glaive goes swinging across and for a moment nothing happens as as you're both sort of standing there she takes another swing towards him and misses extremely spectacularly falling flat on her face and as she does she bumps into his leg causing his head to topple off of his shoulders as his body slumps to the ground and he is dead. Amazing! Oh my goodness! What a way to end that fight! What a way to <laughs> go! A natural one. <laughs> wow! Yes. Amazing! And I can just sort of pick herself up and dust herself off, and then and then sort of acts like nothing happened. <laughs> that was, thank you, because you about lost me there. Yeah, don't fall in any more holes. I'll be more careful next time. Guess I should pay more attention, that. huh? Take that, Derek, she says, and she kicks the <laughs> kicks the decapitated frog's body. <laughs> See if there's anything there? Let's loot. Yeah, um, you can go ahead and search the body. Okay, we're gonna switch this one. We're gonna take this one out of jail. Roll investigation. Eight. You've already jailed dice. 
Oh, I've been rotating out. You only had them a day. I know. Well, I guess I guess it's temporary. Yeah. It's it's like a ten minute ban or so. Exactly. You timed out your dice. I did. There we go. <laughs> okay, so I rolled an eight. I don't know what my investigation is though. Oh, uh, I should. Oh it right, I I didn't know that. It is a nine. So let me see what you find here. Yeah. Do you have like a list of potential loot or something um, for these for this things? One I do. Oh, nice. Specifically for this guy, I do. Um, you find a ring on this guy that is sort of glinting, cool. and uh, you take it off and find. I don't know how to explain these effects like in an in-character way to you, but this is a, a ring of aid, and it adds two to all of your healing, um, including Ooh. so anytime you cast a healing spell, it adds two to it and heals you for two. Okay. So this includes on yourself. So if you cast, let's say that you cast um, healing word and you roll it and you get a one, it adds two to the spell, so it would be three, and then it also heals you for two. So if you were healing oh. yourself with that, it would deal five total. If you were healing Octavia, it would deal three to her and heal you two. Oh, whoa. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they... Do I have to be actively wearing it? You, you have to be wearing it. Okay. I'm well, lucky just... you it fits. I'm gonna put that on real quick. <laughs> After this one. <laughs> nice. Huh? After this fight. Oh, yeah. All right. What else is there? Anything else? Yeah, let me let me look at my little, little see if, here. Let's see if Octavia finds anything. Oh, yeah, Octavia can look. Um, You see Octavia pull out um, what appears to be two health potions. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Do I kind of assume that Octavia's inventory kind of counts as mine too? Yeah. Okay. Y you could kind of, like, you if you want a health potion, you can ask her for one, basically, you know? Yeah, or I assume if something happened, she could throw it. In theory, like, if we're a team, she would give it to me. Like, if I was... I don't know how exactly it works. I assume if I'm downed, then... You, they, they, can, um, they can be drunk or they can be thrown. Like, she could splash potion you with it. Gotcha. Yeah, so... If I'm down or something, she just chucks it at me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a, I don't have to remember this, but it's a bonus action to drink it, but it'd be an action to throw it on you. Oh. So, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But if you if you're drinking it, you're basically doing a shot. So. <laughs> <laughs> it only takes like two seconds. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um. Yeah, and that is what you find on this this little froggo boy's body. <laughs> Perfect. That is amazing. Yes. Sorry, let me, I lost my place in my notes. Oh no, you're good. I was accidentally moved my mic, so we're good. Okay. Um, and Octavia seems very, very proud of the way that this fight has gone, and, and she sort of gives like the the body another kick before before you set back off, um, sort of along your path. I I see how you really feel, huh? Yeah. Well, well, that was Derek. He's the guy that sent all those freak monsters after us. That's Derek. That's Derek, and she she seems very proud that Derek is now dead on the ground with no head. Yeah, you really showed it to him, huh? Oh yeah, we both did. <laughs> All right. Well, how's your patron gonna feel about this? Oh, he doesn't care what we do amongst ourselves. The strong will win, and the weak will lose. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Yeah. I don't know how their system <laughs> works. It depends on the god. And I also didn't know the, I guess, hierarchy either. Is Derek just like a, just another random? Yeah, they, they so they both worship the same god. I guess, why don't you have to ask Octavia in character so I can explain it to you in character? <laughs> yeah, so, who, who is this guy? Oh, Derek, he's just another, yeah, you know, just, just another one of the, the people that worship my patron there's a lot of us we we've, we've all made packs with our with the same god uh, but there's no really relation between us and clearly we don't work together we just happen to have made you know it's like shopping at the same store yeah you're just kind of there together yeah 
Okay. So, so if we can kill each other, I'll be like. Okay, cool. Good to know. I want to be in best spirits with your patron when we get there. Oh, yeah. If he really cared, he'd just bring Derek back to life. Oh, nice. Okay. Hopefully he won't, though, because Derek's kind of, you know. Yeah. Derek. Yeah, let's, let's not. Yeah, so hopefully he stays dead, at least for a while. Oh, yeah. We'll, we will make sure of that. Don't worry. Oh, definitely. I think my patron likes me more anyway. Clearly, oh, absolutely. Or won the fight. Exactly. So, do you, you know which way we're going? Oh, yeah, and she pulls out her, her very broken compass and gives it a whack before it sort of stabilizes. And she goes, we're going the right way, and tucks it back into her bag. Okay, good. I got a little lost with that spike pit thing. Oh, yeah, that was... I wonder if Derek set that or if it was just a trap for, for like, boars. I... I don't know. Couldn't really tell down there. Probably hard to tell when you're, you know, surrounded by spikes. Good yeah. thing you made it out. Yeah, thanks, thanks for trying. I know you kind of oh, got jump scared there. Yeah, Derek kind of kind of snuck up on me a little bit. You know, I was trying to find something good to tie the rope to. Wow, he jumps. How dare. Hate that guy. Me too. Well, don't have to worry about him anymore. No, we don't. We are all set. Awesome. I think I'm ready to go. Yeah. You know, it's, it's actually getting kind of dark. This wouldn't be a terrible spot to set up camp. I was... You read my mind. <laughs> Just think it's getting kind of dark out here. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's uh, set up our bedrolls. Um, and you two are able to get a fire going and set up some bedrolls. You can heat up some of your rations and you can take a long rest. Sweet. And that means I can look at my journal, right? You can look at your journal, yes. So for new people in chat, um, Caleb's character, Phaedron, has this journal um, that is sort of written in cryptic shorthand from before he lost his memory. And he's been reading it every long rest and trying to decipher what it says. So go ahead and roll um, history for me. Okay. It's a d20, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Plus three. Okay, so it's an eight. Plus three. Eight. So 11, yes. Um, you take a look at the um, next page of your journal, which is sort of begins to talk about, um, you're, you're excited about this thing that you found. Um, last time you read it, you learned that you um, had been sent to investigate something, had found it, and were trying to figure out if it was part of the bigger picture. Like you found the actual thing. Yeah, found. it seemed a little Aren't too sure. easy, right? Uh, yeah, it was very quick um, to find it. You seemed almost apprehensive about that in your in your writing, um, mm -hmm. and you, you so you'd found it, but you weren't sure a hundred percent that it was tied into everything else. So you'd been sent to both find it and to investigate if it was part of something else. So you'd you'd already found it pretty quickly. Okay. Um, and on this page, you you seem still kind of unsure um, if this is involved or not. Um, as the way that you're reading it, it's it's a little hard to decipher. You did only roll an eleven. Um, yeah. But you are able to to sort of make out that this this thing it, it it seems like just by the nature, the very nature of it, it is possible that it is involved, and you feel like it is. But but something about it is also making you doubt that it's involved at all. Hmm. You you seem to be kind of on the fence. Hmm. Just. Not coming back to me. Nope. <laughs> Not really. Uh, I, I think I'm done with this for the night. It's been quite the day. Yeah, but what is that you got there? What's what? Your, your little book that you read. I... You don't know? No, what, what is that? I'm... Like, folk stories, or...? Yeah. Folk stories. Oh. You always did like folk stories. You had like a whole shelf of them back at back on the boat. Yeah. Sorry, I memory and all. Long day. Oh no, you're fine. You're fine. I I probably a little confusing, not having any memories, not remembering what books you like. But but yeah, I could have told you like folk stories. Yeah, the the leather bound yeah. one was your favorite, and she she gestures towards your journal. Yep, my favorite indeed. Yeah. All right. Well, be sure to rest up, get those spell slots back, we might need them. Yeah, sounds like it. Got quite the adventure ahead of us. Very much so. 
And you both settle in for bed and are able to take a long rest. Sweet. Ooh. All right. And I think that is where I will leave you. Awesome. Yeah, it's been two hours. Perfect. It has been two hours. I knocked another dice off my desk. <laughs> oh, no. They don't just go off the desk. They go into the pouch on the side of my desk. <gasps> and then you got to dig them out, huh? You have to dig them out, yeah. Not it. Thank you so much. Of course, I will dig those out later. So, yes. what I was so for today, I was like, I want you to finally fight Derek. Uh, not yes. Finally, but fight Derek, and I was like, I'm I'm gonna stat block him. I'm gonna make him like just a monster stat block instead of like a character sheet because I don't want to do a whole character sheet. I've done so many character sheets. Mm -hmm. and oh I yeah. Super late, and I was like, I don't have time to stat block Derek. Uh player in my campaign give me your character sheet and i'll just use it as derek so you got um my dad's character sheet he plays in my other campaign you got oh um, his boyo called cribbit um he is he's a cleric actually but derek is obviously oh. a warlock um, gotcha so you got his his little cleric frog grung he's called a grung his grung character sheet oh because they're super cute that is amazing yes i need to know and you totally decapitated him <laughs> oh <laughs> terrifying yeah. yeah i i it wasn't me i didn't do it yeah but he's like a little yellow frog boy he's very cute hold on i'm about to look him up yeah not dean there oh my god so i can type <laughs> let's see Oh, he is a cute little frog boy. Yeah, he's only three feet tall. I was like looking at his character sheet. I was like, "Well, I didn't know that Cribbit was so cute." <laughs> That's adorable. Oh. Yeah. So when I was looking at like uh, when I what I gave you for um loot, the note that I made to myself was, "Derek has whatever Cribbit has. Send it." So. <laughs> oh. Stuff from his inventory. That's what you meant by you had specific stuff for this one then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, cool. Table, so it's just whatever I gave Cribbit over the adventures. So amazing. Yeah. Is there like a standard loot table type thing? Because I know mine, like in Minecraft, you know how they have generated. Loot. Yeah. So there is. Um. There's a site that I go like to go on for um specific monsters that tells you not only the loot that they normally have, if any, but also how you can butcher them to make like food and like get like edible meat off of the body. <gasps> um. So. There are standard loots for that, but the, for the most part, like monsters, like like the the chitin that you fought today, um, they don't carry like gold on them because their clothing mm. are made of web. Or like like kobolds really don't usually have more than like a couple pieces of copper. Or like you know like a boar is obviously not going to have like money or a dagger on him or anything. So I I kind of just improv from there. Okay, That's no, that makes sense. I'm usually like it has a dagger because you can never have enough of those. True. You can. You can well. <laughs> Yeah, well, you only need like two because you need one uh, to like pry things open and a second one in case you break the one you've been using to pry things open. So fair. But I mean, at the end of the day, if I can just carry, I, why not have all the daggers? Exactly. If I can hold daggers, them all. Why not? Yes. Um, and you are going to level up. <gasps> really? Oh, so shit. I, I should write this up. down. Where Thank you? you. You're welcome. So I'm level three. You are level three, yes. Amazing. I don't know if that comes with new stuff. I know you can tell me stuff later if we need. Um, no, do you want to do it on stream or do you want to do it off stream? It's up to you. Uh, how much is it? To, like... Almost nothing. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. Then yeah, go ahead and do it on stream. That way I can have it for next time. I can look back at it. Yeah. So you are, does your proficiency bonus go up? Not quite. You are gonna get another first. Oh, you get second level spells. <gasps> oh, nice. So your first level spell slots have increased to five. Okay. And you get two second level spell slots. And so as a prepared caster, you have access to all of the second level spells. You just have to pick what ones you want at the. I don't know. You can't cast more than two in a single day because you only okay. have two spell slots. I'm gotcha. not gonna make you prepared spells at the start of the day. Thank you, because I have not. I don't. I never have in my entire life, and I only play clerics, so. <laughs> I love Just that like, for I you. I have six spell slots, and I have, you know, less spells than that, so. Right. That's that's uh, all you I, I totally prepared to tech magic this morning, guys, I swear. Yes. Oh, and you're going to get more health. Ooh. 
Yeah, cause... I lost my D8 into the pocket, though. So can you Do you want me to roll? Eight? Yeah. yeah. Um, which one is eight? This one is eight. Five. Ooh, okay, so five plus your constitution modifier is three, so you're going to get the full eight. So you now have 28 hit points. Oh, hell yeah. Because I gave you a lot of constitution, because I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yes. It's okay, I'll take the lower on whatever it was, insight. Investigation. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, you, you dumped, um, I dumped intelligence and charisma to give you more con and wisdom. Nice. And a little bit of strength because you do use strength for your warhammer, so it's True! Good. It does help. Yeah. There you I go, you're at a level 3 cleric and you don't get to define the main feature. So you should be good. Awesome! Thank you so much! Welcome! This is only going to level 5, you're more than halfway there. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh shit, okay. Yeah. Amazing. Do you know approximately how many more sessions we're looking at, potentially? Mm, probably three or... Probably between two and four. I would I would say about three. Okay. Um, I feel like the last session could go over into like a fourth one. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. Could like a part like one, part be... two. Yeah, like a part one, part two kind of thing. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm excited. There's gonna be a lot of like lore dump in the last one, and, and you might not get to the fight. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Oh yeah. Like yeah. all the memories come rushing back to me. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I'm so here for it. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for playing. I hope you had fun. Thank you. Thank I you did. Yes, thank you guys. I really appreciate y'all being here, and thank you to everyone who has been watching on YouTube. That has. I'm not gonna lie, I've been a little nervous about it. I'm like, I was not expecting people to watch it, so that the fact that people are, I don't know. In not in droves like they have been. What's yeah, it's fun? been kind of crazy. Thank you so much for watching our little adventure. For real, I've and writing. <laughs> yes, it is. I you've been doing incredible. I cannot thank you enough. And also, sneak peek coming soon. Hopefully, I will have better thumbnails for YouTube because. The way they have been doing it's been absolute trash, so I'm gonna work on doing my own thumbnails, hopefully. That'll be awesome! Yeah, so maybe that's something to look forward to as well, and I should put... You read my mind! Look at you go! <laughs> oh, you did it! Yes! But the... Um, you can click the links to go to my Discord, that way you guys can keep track of everything, as well as the viewers pick the stream. I will probably be putting more information in there. Keeping the most up to date. And please go follow Day as well, as well so you can see more of his content. He streams. Um, do you want to... How would you describe your own channel? Oh, God. <laughs> um, I'm a variety streamer. Um, I am a queer disabled gamer artist and dungeon master. And I do the art for Caleb's channel. I do the art <laughs> for my own channel. Um, all of the emotes I did, and we generally just have a very fun, chaotic time over there playing some games. Um, Death Stranding is coming up soon, so yeah. Ooh, amazing. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm excited to see what you do both on your own stream and here next week. I'm excited too. Awesome. Yeah, thank you everyone for watching. Yes, thank you all for being here, and I'll let me wrap this up all right thank you all so so much for watching we will see y'all next week 5 30 or 6 p.m eastern standard time we'll see you here all right y'all have a good one bye <laughs>